There's another phenomenon called hydraulic plucking. As in addition to abrasion, moving water in the flood would pick up debris. And it's not just water moving now, it's liquid sandpaper. It's got gravel and rocks and mud and, and tree stumps and stuff in it. It's going to erode right through solid rock. It's going to abrade its way through rock. Also, there's a phenomenon called liquefaction. Liquefaction happens when sand grains are pressed and then the pressure is relieved. If you go out to the beach in Pensacola, walk out into the surf and stand there knee-deep in the water and just, just stand there for a while. As the waves come by, the high part of the wave weighs more than the low part of the wave, obviously. There's more water there. So the high part of the wave pushes down on the sand under your feet. When the low part comes past you, the pressure is relieved and sand grains start hopping up off the bottom as the water squeezes out of them. This phenomena is called liquefaction. What would happen in a worldwide flood, as the earth is turning under the moon, you would get tides that would go up and down about 200 feet. A 200 foot tidal change every 6 hours and 25 minutes. So the liquefaction would be incredible worldwide because of this flood. It would raise the water 200 feet, which pushes on the sediments, and then the pressure is relieved, which causes all kinds of sorting to happen very quickly. One guy took a giant aquarium and he put a hot water bottle in the bottom, a big rubber bladder with a bazillion little holes in it, and he hooked it to a hose. He put this in the bottom of his aquarium, empty aquarium, and then he took a cement mixer and mixed up uh, rocks, gravel, sand, all kinds of stuff, mixed them together, including dead fish, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. Mixed them all together and dumped them in the aquarium. When he turned the hose on, the aquarium began filling from the bottom as the water is going through this hot water bottle. Well, as it lifts up from the water coming up, it's going to automatically lift things and they're going to fall back down, liquefaction, and they're going to sort themselves by density. He discovered as it filled the aquarium, it sorted everything in the order of birds, mammals, reptiles, amphibians. Well, that's the order they're going to tell you they evolved in. If you just remember the word farm, F-A-R-M, fish should be at the bottom, fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal. That's what the evolutionists will say, how they evolved. No, they're not found in that order, number one. And if they are found in that order, liquefaction or the flood best explains it. There's a whole lot more on that in this book right here by Walt Brown. Also, as some layers are less dense, they get covered up by more dense layers. If conditions are just right, the less dense layer will all of a sudden shoot to the top. It'll break its way through and it causes what's called, what's called a sand plume. These sand plumes can harden and probably Ayers Rock in Australia is a giant sand plume best explained by the flood. If you look at these sand plumes closely, you'll see they have air bubbles all over them. That was the air, the tunnels all over them. That was the air coming out. And during an earthquake, the ground can shake and the water in the ground comes to the surface and the top of the ground can become like soup. There was an earthquake in Japan that sank these buildings. The buildings actually sank into the ground because of the phenomena called liquefaction. Water coming to the surface, settling all the sand grains are all loose, almost like quicksand. Evolutionists will say, Hovind, don't you know the birds are found on top? That proves birds evolve last. And clams are found at the bottom. That proves clams evolve first. I say, well, there's a better explanation. You know, maybe clams are found at the bottom because of their habitat. You know, that's where they live. A clam would be the first one buried in a flood. I mean, he's already at the bottom. Hello. A bird's going to be the last one buried because he can fly around until he runs out of gas. Maybe they're sorted based upon their intelligence. As far as anybody can figure out, you know, clams are not too bright. Maybe they're sorted based upon their mobility. Clams cannot run very fast. Maybe they're sorted based upon their body density. Clam shells are heavier than bird feathers. So the sorting of the fossils, if there is any, is not explained by evolution. It's much better explained by a flood. The Bible says the whole earth, the whole world was covered. All the high hills were covered. The mountains were covered. Then the waters assuaged, which means to drop down. NIV says the waters receded. No, 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 they didn't recede, and they weren't wild animals. NIV got it wrong twice in that verse. They were all perfectly tame animals at the, during the flood. But the waters didn't recede. The waters assuaged. The Bible says the waters stood above the mountains. Psalm 104, verse 5 and 6. Hugh Ross teaches it was a local flood in the days of Noah. Uh, excuse me, 15 cubits above the highest mountain and it's a local flood? I'd like to see that happen. When I debated Hugh Ross, I said, Dr. Ross, do you believe in a worldwide flood in the days of Noah? He said, I believe in a universal flood. Well, that is just a deceitful answer, okay? I said, what do you mean a universal flood? 
He said, well, it flooded Noah's little universe. Just It flooded the valley that he lived in. I said, would you answer a question then for me, please? If it's just a local flood that floods Noah's valley, why would God tell Noah to build that huge boat and fill it full of animals and stay in there for a year? Why not tell Noah to move? This local flood idea is dumb. Capital D, dumb. Okay. People say, well, if the world's covered with water, where did it all go? Okay. During the last few months of the flood, the unstable plates of the crust of the earth would begin to shift and some places would sink down. Thin spots would sink down. Other places lifted up. The water's going to rush off and fill in the hole very quickly, causing erosion very quickly. The Bible says in Psalm 104, at thy rebuke they fled. This is talking about the water. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. The water rushed off. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them, which is the oceans. What happened was the mountains lifted up the water rushed off into the new low places. If we filled this auditorium four feet deep in water, the preacher would be upset, I'm sure, but let's just do it for a science experiment, for the good of science. We're going to fill the auditorium four feet deep in water. Then we're going to get all the guys in the school to pick up that end of the building. They pick up that end. All the water is going to rush down, whoosh, over to this end of the building. It's common sense. If the earth were covered with water and some places began to sink down, other places are going to lift up. It's kind of like a water bed. How many have ever slept on a waterbed before? You know, my wife is only five feet tall. When she gets sound asleep on the side of a waterbed, I don't like waterbeds, we don't have one, but I've slept on them a couple times. You wait till she's sound asleep on her side. I tiptoe in, stand up on a chair, and jump up as high as I can, sh boom, and land on my side of the waterbed. She goes up to the ceiling, comes down, eh, and I sleep on the couch because I don't like waterbeds anyway. But uh, here, if one place goes down, someplace else is going to lift up. The crust of the earth probably did a lot of flexing during the time of Noah's flood and probably for the next few hundred or maybe even a few thousand years after the flood. Actually, I think this is still moving around a little bit, causing the earthquakes. There might still be water under the crust of the earth trapped. As some of the water escaped during the hydroplate theory idea, the, the plate would settle down, trapping water under there. There are still huge areas of trapped water. Did you know there are underwater at the bottom of the ocean... Underwater thermal vents, there's hot water squirting up from the bottom of the ocean. Well, duh, where is it coming from? Doesn't it have to come from down lower than that? There's still water in the crust of the earth, trapped down there. The ocean crust is pretty thin, about three to five miles thick. Continental crust is about 30 miles thick. Any earth science teacher can tell you that. That's been pretty well determined from... You know, reading the S&P waves when earthquakes uh, take place. The earth is cracked up, I understand, and it's got a bunch of plates are moving around, and they're still moving a little bit. Pensacola has zero chance of an earthquake, according to this map. Some places have a real good chance of an earthquake. The cracks have been found, and they're still active, still moving. <clears throat> the earth would be like a big water balloon. It would be floating, flexing up and down. Now, we're talking just a few miles on an 8,000-mile earth. A few miles of movement is close to zero in scale here. The water would run off, causing enormous erosion canyons. Just south of uh, Houston, Texas, they had a flood several years ago in New Braunfield, Texas. The water went roaring over as, the, as it flooded and overflowed its dam and caused incredible erosion. If you fly out west and just look at some of the erosion patterns, it's, patterns, it's unbelievable how much erosion this planet has had. You see the three gossips here, the rock spires sticking up out of the ground, or the penguins, or go see the... Uh, uh, Arches National Park in Utah or Bryce Canyon. You see these rocks sticking straight up out of the ground. They'll tell you it takes millions of years to erode all this stuff. Yes, boys and girls, millions of years of erosion. I don't think so. That's in my backyard. There's my ink pen on top of it. I had a pile of dirt out there. It got rained on one time and it made erosion marks. Here's millions of years of erosion along a highway built a few months ago. There's millions of years of erosion. No, I don't think so. I think that's my glasses sitting right there. Erosion can take place quickly. There's uh, obviously great erosion marks in Washington and Idaho from the Missoula flood. There was an ice dam. I believe this would happen after the fl real flood of Noah's time, maybe a few hundred years later. Ice caps are melting back, but a big bunch of water got trapped, all of a sudden released itself, 
shot down to Portland, Oregon, did incredible erosion. Along the way, there's a waterfall, one of the largest waterfalls in the world, called Dry Falls, Washington. But there's no water going over this waterfall. Totally dry. But when it was flowing, it was probably bigger than all the waterfalls in the world put together. You can study about Dry Falls, Washington, if you want to read more on that.